Yeah, and with use in nonviolent communication, you might also hear, refer to as compassionate communication. Um, I personally really am aligned with the name nonviolent communication because it is rich in history with Gandhi, Martin Luther King. A lot of social change has happened in, with, with the pursuance of nonviolent culture. And so I'm a little tied to it. And it does, it's problematic for some people um, because it is telling you how not to be. And that's not what really what we teach. Is we, we really want to like to encourage you to make choice and to be the way you want to be um, and to never uh, tell you what not to be. So that's a little bit on the name. Um, we have, uh, on us, we have practice groups uh, within town, we, we do workshops, um, we go anywhere we're invited, and uh, one of the practice groups is a Green Party that I run every Tuesday night, and if you're a member of the Greens, you are welcome to come. I have an open group on Monday nights in League City, and then we have some in Montrose, um, out in the Galleria, in the Heights, and we are open to doing practice groups for certain specific organizations or clubs. So just like keep that on the table if that's something you're interested in. Um, so basically, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about anger tonight because the misnomer is that, you know, we want you to get rid of your anger. And that's not the case really, really want to encourage you to get to the core of your anger and to to understand, and I'm not saying that everyone here is angry, but there are moments when we are angry. I get angry. Everybody gets angry. And a lot of people in social change movements use that as the fire to fuel them. And that's wonderful. And I'd really encourage to see that, do you go to that core of the anger and to find out what is the belief system, pass the trigger, to separate the trigger, like say it was something in the news or a law or something somebody said, that, that's the trigger. Then as you let your words out, as you get to the core, as you go through your story, then you can hit on what is that belief system that I'm carrying with me? Where does that come from? And then can I change that belief system or is that the belief system that I want to have? So I wake up in the morning and go, this is the belief system that I want to have when I live in the world. I want to wake up in the morning and say, oh, I live in the world where the government sucks. No, I don't want that belief system. I want to wake up in the morning and say, I live in a world where I matter. I live in a world where I'm heard. I live in a world where everybody's at choice all the time, 100% of the time. Students, children, adults, elderly, everybody. So it's a real encouragement to use, like anytime you get angry or sad or whatever it is, follow that to the core of it. So what happens, if we stay at the trigger level, if we stay at the story level, then we create enemy images in our mind. And these enemy images hold us down. They weigh us down. And, you know, I mean, like you could have 20 bodies dragging behind you and holding your frame down because you're carrying enemy images. You put someone in the prison of your mind and you're the jailer. And then you put yourself in there and throw away the key. And then you're in a big fucking mess. So the whole idea is to use this concept to transmute the energy so that I'm resourced enough to know that I'm at choice all the time. And I may have someone who's violent or saying things that I don't like but I can stand in that and I can lean into it. And I said earlier, put my giraffe ears on. What I meant by that was that's the language of the heart is the giraffe. The jackal feeds on speed. So the giraffe is all about coming from the heart. So when I'm resourced enough and I've cleared out my enemy images and I've cleared out whatever emotions are coming up, then I can lean into whatever you're saying past your words and ask, really be curious about what's alive for you. What's going on with you? What needs of yours aren't being met that you've picked a strategy like this to come at me with? And so then I'm the one in the room who is able to create change and to be at choice. Because believe me, when you're in that energy, you're not at choice. When you're caught up in something, you're not at choice. You're just going along with whatever is pushing you. 
So nonviolent communication is about really creating peace inside yourself. Creating that inside yourself that, so that you can make those choices and be in the world that you want to live in. So, I mean, I've got more, but any questions or? Um, well, I was going to say if you could tell everybody a little more about the history of NBC and Marshall sure. Rosenberg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Marshall Rosenberg uh, grew up in Detroit in the uh, race riots. And um, he was a Jewish man, got you know beat up for being Jewish, and also saw a lot of people dying because of their color. And he was really curious yeah. as to why some people seem to get joy out of creating harm or hurting other people, and some people seem to get joy out of doing nice things for other people or, or you know creating joy in their life. And so he really followed this question and. He uh, became a PhD in psychology, and then he realized that it was kind of the same thing as saying, you know, you're an asshole and you're psychotic. I'm still judging you, I'm still evaluating you, I'm still diagnosing you. So he really wasn't okay with that. So he followed this question from his childhood, like why, what, what motivates people? And the motivation were needs. Needs like harmony, love, um, peace, shelter, survival, um, uh, uh, gratitude, uh, all of Maslow's needs that have been listed is just everywhere he went, he found that every human being shared those needs. Now this is differing from strategy, that's a very important key detail, because strategies like money, um, like clothing, like uh, certain kinds of food, like certain choices, violence, nonviolence, nonviolent communication is a strategy. Those are all strategies. And money is a super satisfier. Money is like a strategy that, you know, people often say, I need money. They don't really need money. You gotta look beneath that. What do they really need at that moment? Maybe they need to like go to the doctor. Maybe they actually need some food. Maybe, you know, whatever money is affording them. Maybe they're needing autonomy and freedom and want to go on a road trip and money's a strategy. And that's okay, but just recognizing that that is not a need. That's a strategy. And so uh, Marshall realized this and um, he worked with uh, schools, gangs. He also realized and identified that we are all in gangs. So every person here is in a gang, whether it's a family gang, a citizen of the government, an inner city gang, whatever it is, you're a gang. So the gang mentality is what he was really interested in, like how do we create a more enriching gang to be in? And um, so he followed that. He uh, lived out of his car after he left the world of PhD. And he went anywhere he was invited. He worked in schools. He finally ended up, um, he was talking somewhere in San Francisco and he was talking about, you know, living out in, the, um, in his car. And this lady came up and gave him a, a really big check. And she, he's like, what's this? And she said, well, it has strings attached. I don't want you sleeping in your car anymore. And he said, well, I gotta give it back. And she said, why? And he goes, well, if um, I had that much money, I'd actually buy a computer and, and then a car that we could sleep in better. And she's like, okay, take it, but it would really help me if you were a nonprofit. So he created Center for Nonviolent Communication in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and started you know, getting donations that way, and then just going all over the world to spread this message. And um, I mean, he went to Israel and Palestine. He went to Africa and worked with some people who have been through a lot of shit and he you know he went wherever he could until five years before he died he just died last year he was on planes going wherever he could he really saw that this message needed to be spread and he couldn't do it fast enough and that is one like tricky thing about it is that it, it, it takes practice and um, it's a lot of work and the one-on-one -on -one, I love it, and the social change of it is just like, we're so waiting for that. And there's a, there's a handful of people that are working tirelessly, more than a handful now. I think there's uh, 200 trainers worldwide. And our board here in Houston is five, five strong, and we're 
doing whatever we can in this big city. So is that enough history? Or? Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, that's the question. I have some questions, but okay. it might be backtracking. So, so that you said you were talking about needs and strategies and like mm -hmm. there's a difference. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of explain what those are? Like what the needs are and, and like, so I guess that there's like a need and then how you would use a strategy to, to combat that or? To meet that need? In theory, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, can you give me a, a situational example? Um, let me think. Well, I think like what she was saying about like, she kind of used Brianna, I think, as an example. You're saying like a road trip, the money's not really what you need. It's yeah. just a strategy to achieve the need, which is this road trip and the experience or whatever. You know? So, the thing yeah. she's saying some people confuse like what yeah. you really want versus like Yeah, I'm just wondering what types there are. What types of stuff. So, there is money. Great, that's a great question. I have some, um, I have some cards. Yes. For you guys. <laughs> Um, you have one I'm, I'm good, yeah. You're good. So, Remington's in my Tuesday night group. And, um, so, on the on the front is are, the, are just some of the needs. Now, these are not exhaustive lists. These are, you know, you can go... You can go to online, Google, and you've got a whole bunch of different trainers with different needs. Um, but they will stay away from strategies. So you can see that contribution is a need. It's not possible that it's a strategy. We all as human beings need to contribute. It is a life force inside of us that we just, our greatest joy is when we contribute to another human being. That's just like, you ask anybody about their history, what's the greatest moment in your life? And it's generally they're in contribution in some way. Now, how they contribute, that may be a strategy. So whether it's working at a homeless shelter, picking up trash, um, you know, playing music, whatever it is, those are strategies for doing so. Did that clarify? Um, yeah. yeah. And then on the bottom where it says express needs creatively, creatively, instead of always saying I need, especially when we work in businesses because they like to stay away from needs and feelings, We'll say something like non-controversial essence, or um, what drives you, or it's important for me to have, and that's when it becomes a more natural language. And then on the back are, are just some fillings when needs are perceived to have been met or perceived to not been met. And so fillings, so there's a couple steps in the, in the method, um, which is just, it is a concept, and then you use the concept, just like anything, and it becomes life. When you don't use the concept, it remains as a concept. I mean, when you use it in manipulation, or you use it, I call it like away from the surface of your heart. When you use it out here, then it, it stays a concept. And people might say, oh yeah, that method is just like, you know, people use that to get their way. That, they're out here. When it sinks in, and you're really using it every day, and you're checking in with yourself, and you're mindful, then there's no way that you, there's no going back, basically, what I believe. Um, so the uh, first step of that concept is observation, and it's just the facts. It's staying in, you are sitting on a couch right now. Um, not comfortably on a couch, nothing with evaluation, nothing like that. So you have observation. Then you go to the feeling next, and feelings are on the white side. Like sad, depressed, bored, afraid, loving, amazed. And these differ from thoughts. So if I say, and this is what our culture does, if I say, I feel abandoned, for me, I might actually feel angry. And you might actually feel, if you say, I feel abandoned, lonely. lonely. Right. Yeah, so we're not having the same conversation. If I say, I feel abandoned, she's like, yeah, I know what you mean. Our hearts are already in two different places. Like, we're not connected. So getting away from those thoughts and really sinking into what, it, what am I feeling is super important to, to get into connection with another person. So playing with that, um, and it, it's about retraining. I mean, we've grown up however old you are. That's how many years you've grown up in this culture, which is a domination culture that stays away from connection of the heart. 
so feelings and then and then it goes to underneath that feeling well what need is your of yours is either being met or not met and then there can be a request so say i need um clarity like we're in a conversation and i don't know when super's happening so i might say would you be willing to tell me what time and the address for super that's a clarifying request um there might also be a connection request where I might say, hey, Remington, um, what'd you hear when I said that? And then he can respond to me and let me know what he's hearing me say. Or I might say, um, how are you feeling when I say that? And then I'm connecting with like how she's really feeling inside. And then there's action requests, like, would you get me a glass of water? But the request, the reason, the way that you know they're different than demand is if, um, and I forgot your name, Monica. Monica said no when I said, would you get me a glass of water? And I had the energy around it, like, oh, damn it, you know? Really, you need to get me a glass of water. <laughs> um, then that was a demand. It wasn't a request. Yeah, so, expectation. Yeah, you had an expectation to it. You were, he could be as sweet as pie and say, oh, would you make me one of your keynote speakers every week, every month? And you say no, and if I got pissed then it's a demand. I'm really saying, make me one. So <laughs> that's, the, that's the difference now. So that's the four steps. So um, could you maybe give us an example? So what, what I like about it, and the reason I wanted you guys to come, the reason mm -hmm. I, a lot of activists that I know definitely see NBC as kind of just like parallel to like the rest of our sort of tools to try to create a better, more free world. It's just mm -hmm. learning the way we interact and communicate and mm -hmm. doing that in a respectful, compassionate way. And, uh, all the force and violence out of all of our lives. So I, I, and I also find value in my own personal life. What I like is that when conflicts, conflict arises when needs aren't met. So basically the, the important thing is to help people understand their needs and then step back and realize like, okay, well, the reason I'm feeling disgruntled or whatever these, whichever these feelings are is because I expected this or this is what I need right now or I believe I need and this person is not hearing me, not listening, not whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, how, how does a person respond to a situation? You know, so one of us starts feeling frustrated, and we take a moment to kind of reflect, like, okay, yeah, it's because this person is not hearing me, they're just not listening to me. Like, how would you yeah. suggest proceeding from there? So do you want to role play, or do you yeah. want, okay, all right. Um, so let's have a situation, an observation. Like, what's the observation? What are we talking about? Um, I want to go to the park, and you won't let me. Okay. Am I like your mom or no, girlfriend? You're, you're or? my girlfriend. Okay. Sure. Okay. okay. You want to go I want to go to the park and, and you're not interested. You have a car, right? I'm frustrated that. Okay. 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 So I encourage in role play to um, to stick with it only as long as the energy feels right. If you feel a shift in the energy, I want you to answer honestly. Okay. okay. Um, so am I going to be a giraffe yet, or am I just totally, are we both jackals first? I think we'll both do jackal. Let's do jackal yeah. first, and then we'll all go like this, and then maybe I'll sink into giraffe. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're both jackals. You start, because you want to go. I'm busy. Will you take me to the park? No. Why not? I mean... I mean, you have a car, I'm asking you to go. Because I'm doing my nails right now. Did you see? I'm doing my nails. And it takes, I do these once a week, and it's really hard to so get black on. So obviously what you're doing is more important than what, I, what, I'm, what I'm feeling yeah. is important right now. Yeah, Your because needs they're are more my nails. Than mine. They're my nails. So okay. it's very important to me. Okay, so stop. <laughs> All right. So now I have, just, let's just say I'm the one with NBC skills. Okay. All right. You take me to the park? Um, why do you need to go to the park? Uh, I just want to be outside, you know, it's a nice day. I feel like maybe we could go there together and hang out. So you're wanting some connection and maybe some peaceful time? That's, I, w I would like some, I would like some peaceful time and I think that maybe I'd like to spend time with you at the park outside. Okay, okay. Um, are you available to hear what's going on for me right now? Yes, I can hear. Okay. I just started my nails and they usually take about an hour because I really like to put on the black. And and I do that because I know you like beauty 
and I would love to go to the park with you, but I'd like to finish this. Would you be willing to maybe come up with a strategy that works for both of us? Yeah, we can work together. We can work on this. Okay. So that's how it works. <laughs> so we lean into the other person's needs. Um, I had um, an example. One of my students on Monday sent a clip, the Walmart clip, where I don't know if you guys saw it on YouTube, but like this lady's bitching at the guy in front of her. He's got food stamps, so oh, she's all that. pissed off, and and he's like, "How yeah. would you? What would you do with this? You know, what would you do about it?" Because she was like, <laughs> "You're." taking the money from the government and he's like fuck you and they both have kids wow. and it's, it's a situation you know and so like someone is is recording and then the checkers like trying to do her stuff and uh so he came in and said what you know how would you intervene well you know when when there's children or if they're if you're starting to sense that there's a need for protective use of force or something like that you intervene at the level that the people are at so um, had I been the checker, had I been the person, you know, standing right there by them, I would, I would amp it up to the level that they were talking at, which was kind of yelling at each other, and, and lean into her and say, look, I, I hear you're really needing, like, some security and some predictability in our government. And, hey, it sounds like you're really tired and overwhelmed, and, and you'd really like some financial security. And but you take small, like, really small bites so that they can't, take over the situation and you connect with each of them so not trying to fix anything what you're doing is empathy it's always yeah. empathy so like what I was giving you was empathy what I would be giving them was empathy at a higher frequency and it's empathy 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 yeah so I think what I've learned just from like reading about it and sort of just watching stuff online is the main goal not the main goal but a big feature is making sure that the other person knows that they're being heard a lot of people, I know, mm -hmm. and I think when you start, you start to sort of evaluate the times that you get frustrated or angry, you're like, okay, well, it's because when you really stop and think about it, like, well, they obviously didn't hear what I had to say, or you at least felt like you weren't heard, and then mm -hmm. that, that's when the conflict arises, where you're like, well, they're not listening to me, so screw them, I'm just going to come back angry or whatever, you know. And yeah, so yeah. So